Town by Neil Jones with original music by Catherine Seaton. <laughs> On a quiet street. <laughs> On a quiet street, Mrs. Happy was busy tending the hedges in her front garden. Mrs. Happy was, as her name implied, quite happy. Welcome to... Cheerful Town! Good morning, Mrs. Sunflower! Said Mrs. Happy, for she often greeted objects this way. Good morning, Mrs. Happy! Miss Sunflower answered in Mrs. Happy's mind, for sunflowers can't really talk. Some perfectly nice medical professionals had described this to Mrs. Happy as variations on mania and had written her a prescription for brightly coloured pills. (laughs) Mrs. Happy always got these prescriptions filled because she loved to please people. But once she got home, she immediately flushed the pills down Mr. Toilet, the happiest toilet in all of cheerful time. Good morning, Greengrass, said Mrs. Happy. If you say so, Mrs. Happy, said Greengrass for real. Mr. Greengrass was Mrs. Happy's next-door neighbour. He was not happy. (laughs) He was old and had just stopped working 41 years ago after being seriously injured by a forklift being operated by the foreman's idiot son in a warehouse. (laughs) He filled his days with Sudoku puzzles, which he could never finish, not a single one. Puzzles he would toss aside or into the fire with a grunt. (laughs) When it was cold outside, his left leg and hip throbbed something awful, causing him to swear. Mr. Greengrass often swore, which upset Mrs. Happy. Them damn sunflowers can't talk, Mrs. Happy. Waste our bloody breath. You should stop. Don't listen to him, Miss Sunflower said in a voice that only Mrs. Happy could hear. In fact, Mrs. Happy, Miss Sunflower whispered conspiratorially... (laughs) Why don't you take those head shears and stab old Greengrass? Oh, I couldn't do that. Greengrass, who clearly hadn't heard the voices in Mrs. Happy, said, Suit yourself. And bent to pick up his newspaper. (coughs) A newspaper full of depressing news about crime and violence, which made Greengrass curse and rant something awful. Your gun-stealing crummy. Whenever he read that police in the United States had shot and killed another unarmed young man, which these days was far too frequent, Mrs. Happy, on her side of the shared row house wall, had to cover her ears. The Times Post-Tribune Dispatch Gazette, or the TPTDDG, as it was known to absolutely no one, was Mr. Greengrass's paper of choice. It was his only choice. It had a circulation of one, him. For even in cheerful town, where everyone hoped for the best... Print journalism was nearly dead. (laughs) Indeed, the publishers of the Times Post-Tribune Dispatch Gazette couldn't wait until Greengrass slipped away into the next life so they could cancel his subscription and lay off the printers. Every day he didn't die, they cursed the paper's founders, who, until as recently as 1983, had been offered guaranteed lifetime subscriptions. (laughs) What were they thinking? Hey, look at Where are we on that green grass file? Still alive, Stan. Ah, God. For you see, the obituary of Lucas Greengrass of 163 Serenity Lane had already been written, missing only the date and the cause of death. It was already to be published in the Times Post-Tribune Dispatch Gazette's first all-digital edition. What an awful dilemma for Stan and Lipcott. Two grown men, not sure if they could call each other by their surnames or their Christian names, both waiting anxiously for a man's demise. Back in Mrs. Happy's front garden, Miss Sunflower had some advice for Mrs. Happy. Go on, stab him, she said. Quick, while he's bent over, stab him with the shears. No, 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 absolutely not. Arguing with your damn begonias again, Mrs. Happy? He can't talk to you like that. (laughs) Said Mr. Fence. Also, as you have probably surmised, in Mrs. Happy's head. Everyone knows begonias can't talk. Stab him! 
said Miss Sunflower. It's not like he's got much to live for. This was a thought Mrs. Happy had often had when she overheard Mr. Greengrass cursing next door. Yeah, what does the old misanthrope have to look forward to? Said Miss Sunflower. Uh, I think they know my voice by now. Said Miss Sunflower. Ah! Come on, Miss Happy. What does Greengrass have to look forward to? His newspaper? A forest! <laughs> Ten minutes with it and you know we'll be damning and effing through the wall. Said Mr. Fence. No. Mrs. Happy hated that thought. She believed that between Mr. Greengrass, no. public transit, no. and premium cable, no. there was entirely too much foul language in the world. Do it now, Mrs. Happy. Stab him. Implored Mr. Fence. Quick! Oh, Mrs. Busybody's at the salon having her hair done. It's the perfect window of opportunity. Get a good grip. Use both hands. Bleed between his ribs. Said Miss Sunflower. Really? Added Miss Sunflower. Oh, come on. Mrs. Happy didn't know what to do. She had been listless ever since her husband Ralph had died. He was the one who had made all the lists in their household. The policewoman who in this instance is a policeman called Ralph's death. A horrible freak accident. <laughs> Lovely. But Mrs. Happy, Mr. Shedd, and Mr. Gasoline knew better. The policeman, well-meaning but clearly uncomfortable, had tried to comfort Mrs. Happy by saying, I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> A loss of lists, thought Mrs. Happy at the time. Back in the present, old Mr. Greengrass was... Still struggling to pick up his paper. Damn bloody shitty bloody paper! Oh, the swearing. Kill him. Stop him, said Miss Sunflower and Mr. Fence in reverse order. Trembling, Mrs. Happy raised up the head shears. And then things, as they often did for her when she was agitated, well, things got a little hazy. Just an average day in... Cheerful town! Welcome to the Times Post Tribune Dispatch Gazette, Digital Edition, Obituary Page. Lucas Philip Greengrass, 79, died in what an uncomfortable policewoman, who was obviously a man, described as a <laughs> horrible freak accident, involving an altercation with a next door neighbor on Wednesday, May 18th, 2016, in Chiffeltown, Vermont. He was born on April 25th, 1937, in Miserable Cove, Maine, to Andrew and Temperance Greengrass. In 1958, he married the amazing Invisible Amelia, a circus freak. After she vanished, he remarried in 1960 to one Elaine Freed, because let's be honest, two Elaine Freeds were not available. And together, they raised their son Barnaby. Lucas worked as a general laborer in a warehouse until 1975, until, while partially deaf from a combination of ear candling and psychedelic drugs, he was severely injured on the job. He spent his later years trying to understand how in the name of goddamn shitting piss to solve Sudoku puzzles. Lucas is survived by his son Barnaby and his granddaughter Kathy, who can solve Sudoku quite easily. <laughs> get out of this obituary, kid. Go on. Get. <laughs> Funeral services will be privately held. Memorial donations may be made in Lucas's name to the Danger of Neighbors with Garden Shears Awareness campaign. 3054 Northeast West South Street Boulevard, Cheerful Town, Vermont.